Um, there's a great quote by Douglas Adams that we talk about in the technology side of the field, which says, um, anything that existed before you were born is the way things have always been and is totally boring. Anything that's invented between the time you're born and the time you turn 35 is really cool. And you should devote your energy to that and promote it, and it's really inventive. Anything that happens after age 35 is against the natural order of things and must be, resist, must be resisted at all costs. So uh, old fogies notwithstanding, or what is it, old farts that the, uh, the, the cans uh, uh, talk about. I think that's a good quote. And I also want to talk about ADR Cyber Week, which is the online conference for the, dispute resolu the online dispute resolution niche of our field, which just took place last week, and you can learn more about it at odr.info. We had 800 people from all over the world come together for a solid week. And there was no one in my zip code or my area code, but I spent five solid days. We did podcasts, discussion forums, online chats. We even met in virtual spaces, which I'll talk about a little bit. So that may be an indicator of the future. Uh, I also want to indicate uh, John Healy, uh, because on, on Thursday we had an event with the, um, uh, the uh, ACR chapter in Northern California, where we honored John's contributions to the field. And he got the Mary Parker Follett Award last year, for, again, for these online contributions. But it all goes back, in a sense, to John trying to get some documents for the community boards and not being willing to drive across the Bay Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, so John's laziness, you know, introduced ConfliftNet and then <laughs> Mediate.com and so, and CITDR.org and many other resources. But also, if we just think ourselves about how much technology has changed us and changed our practice. Um, I was in the Peace Corps from 95 to 97, and when I left, there were no email addresses and websites, and by the time I came back, it was on the side of buses, it was everywhere. And if anything, people were impatient. They wanted more change. They wanted it to go faster. And now all of our business cards have websites and email addresses on them. And parties expect that we were, are able to make use of those channels. So think about the way television changed us. Think about the way computers have changed us. That's a good indicator for probably what's coming in the next 10 years. So I, and it's okay to be a little afraid of it. But, because, but I just want to remind everybody that we were afraid of it 10 years ago, 20 years ago, too. And it's turned out okay. You know, one of the things we talked about yesterday is we need to be cognizant of the problems and then work to minimize them. But there's a lot of opportunity as well. So I'm going to take a little, let's see, I probably already used up half of my time. So um, I, I'm going to take a little liberty in the order that I had in the, in, the, in the meeting space. And so I'm going to talk about five different elements of what may be coming in the next 10 years. Uh, the first, and it's a good place to start, is the emerging digital eloquence of the younger generation. And I'll, I'll also talk about Dave, uh, Dave Larson from Hamlin wrote a great article in Negotiation Journal about this just a, a year or two ago. But um, now when kids leave camp, they don't trade postal, email, uh, postal addresses. They trade email addresses. My kids, I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old, they go online and they play this game called Club Penguin where they turn into a penguin and they interact with people all over the world. The game is hosted in the U.K., but they are penguins, and they run around and slide on the ice. And for them, it's completely normal and natural. Um, I, I think it, it's a little alien to us, understandably. But the younger generation has a facility with technology that I think none of us really will, will understand. And we probably had um, understandings that our parents didn't understand. And it's OK to have these, this evolution. And while it may be frightening, it's not necessarily better or worse. Um, and Dan was mentioning, too, uh, information and communication technologies are changing, changing education. We, we used to talk about how many hours a course was. Well, that doesn't mean anything anymore because we have these blended learning environments where people are logging onto websites asynchronously. So I think we need the first trend I'd like to talk about or, or identify is this emerging digital eloquence of the younger generation and the fact that we as a field are going to need to wrestle with that. So the next one is uh, video and audio conferencing. Now, uh, Tanya's piece talks about some really far out stuff, like the ability to digitally uh, record the video of your entire life, every second in your whole life, or uh, the ab ability to put an internet connection into your head. Uh, you know, that stuff's pretty far out there. I'm not going to blow your mind with that. But I will say, you know, video and audio conferencing is quickly becoming a reality. Um, my company, eBay, just bought another company called Skype. And Skype's goal is to make all phone calls between every people in the world free. So if you download and install Skype, you can do it right now. You can call anyone else with a Skype account in the world, and you can talk to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's free. Um, Skype.com, S-K-Y-P-E. 
And one of the ways that I stay in touch with the ODR field is through Skype. I talk to Sri Lanka, I talk to Malaysia, I talk to the Philippines all the time. And it's perfectly free and the quality is better than your phone. Skype also has video conferencing integrated. Now it is admittedly primitive. But last night I was watching TV, waiting for John to come back from his revels. And because uh, we're a roommate, we're rooming with each other. And uh, there was a com commercial for Cisco and they were talking about um, video conferencing. And they had a board table like this with a negotiating team and they had video screens and they had the other negotiating table. And half the, the other side was in Japan, and these people were, I don't know, presumably in the United States, and they could see every feature, HDTV quality. And that's coming, that's not very far away. I would imagine it's four or five years away. So this technology is going to be a watershed event for ODR because people understand it. You don't have to wrap your brain around communicating textually or all the various compromises that we make in ODR now. But I think that, that it's a very important thing and I, I wanted to raise it as, a, as a, something that we need to deal with as a field. So moving, cir moving the circle out a little bit wider, I know I'm bumping up against my time. Um, E-democracy and digital government uh, is something that is coming. Uh, the, the leading edge of technology is almost always in the for-profit sector because we have Schumpeter's creative destruction. You have companies that create technology and then disappear. So there's a rapid innovation and that's because there's so much money connected to it. Government and educational institutions, they adopt technology on the second wave. And what we're about to see is technology is already transforming democracy. Um, YouTube and blogs and Drudge Report, all these things are changing the way... Oh, Peter's coming over here. I'm in trouble. But I'm getting close. Oh, he's talking with Kerry. Good. <laughs> all right. So I'm... Um, but, so it's already changing democracy. And what's going to happen is now governments are going to be using technology more and more to do the things that, that are parts of democracy. There's going to be more opportunity for inf information dissemination. We've seen this in the EPP side of the field. Documents that used to be held in chambers at the EPA and nobody ever saw, now you can go and you can download these things. Uh, anybody can, anywhere around the world. There are new opportunities for public participation through the EPA. The IRS is talking about using dispute resolution to deal with 200 plus million IRS issues every year. So it's a real opportunity for us. All right, Peter's looking at me. I got, I got one more. I got one more. You got about a minute. All right. Buy some time. Sounds good. Um, buy some time, exactly. How much, Peter? Lots. Okay. Trade. Actually, I got two more. All right, and I'll go, I'll go through this fast. But I, I don't know if anybody's heard of the Thomas Friedman book, The World is Flat. But it's talking about the fact that information technology is flattening the world. At eBay, I work on a daily basis with people in India. And to a certain degree, your intellect is portable. When you can get into these global networks, you can communicate around the world seamlessly. That's one of the things that Skype is facilitating. So in, in the world of ODR, on a daily basis, I work with people from Malaysia, the Philippines, India, Nigeria, Sri Lanka. Uh, in the Australian outback, they're using technology to provide dispute resolution services to indigenous populations. So the point is, we may be competing against Indian mediators for cases at some point. But, um, you know, and there are virtual teams, people who are collaborating around the world, and they're encountering new issues. People are just as complicated on either side of the technology as they are face-to-face. -face. So we need to wrestle with that reality in our field. And the last one that I'll raise is probably the only one that I'll really try to blow your minds with, but virtual spaces are emerging. Virtual worlds, physical, th well, they aren't physical, but they are 3D representations where you can walk around and interact with other people, interact with avatars. I taught a course on online dispute resolution at SMU in Texas just three weeks ago, and I did a dispute resolution training, simulations, um, in this virtual world, people interacting as avatars. Men were rep had female avatars. Um, race, age, all those things are self-represented. So many of the things that we take as, as key tenets of the field, things we have to wrestle with, you can deal with through technology. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying these are trends that are emerging. And it's going to be things that we need to wrestle with as a field. It presents opportunities to us at the same time as it presents challenges. So I'm not saying it's, this is the future, do it, or you're going to be left behind. That's not the case. But hopefully this, talking about these five trends will jar some thoughts in your mind and we can begin the conversation.